Moses Boldu in his very bright attire joins me here on the desk. I just threw this all together <laughs> last minute, really. So Still looks good. Yeah, uh, we are talking <laughs> Bobcats and, of course, yes. playoff race. Still not that far away from them, but more so playing a spoiler role. Yeah, you know what? I guess that's how you could define the season so far. It's been really woeful at times, and they played brilliant, especially recently, of course, beating Spruce Grove, the top team in the North Division. And then last night, taking on the White Court Wolverines, who won seven of their last nine to sit in second place in the AJ North. So let's go to the highlights. The Bobcats have one of the hottest goalies in the AJHL right now. Devin Green has won his last five starts. First frame, Cats, quick pass, goes right to Tanner Clarkson, rings it off the post. Other end, Wolverine, Jerome Raymond alone, the side of the net, but Green shutting the door. So halfway through the first cross, ice pass doesn't work out. The puck bobbles around and Tanner Clarkson will score on a blind shot towards the net. Then four minutes later, Dustin LeBrun scores just eight seconds into the power play. So third period we go, Cats up one, Kevin Waltz to Nolan Yaremchuk. He'll be denied by Anthony Taranzia, but he couldn't stop the Brandon Crone deflection here on another Cats power play three minutes into the third. The orange and black go three for five on the man advantage and kill seven of eight penalties, while Devin Green stops 26 shots for his sixth straight win as a starter. That 4-2 victory puts the Bobcats in a tie for second last in the AJHL. More importantly, uh, they deny the Wolverines from creating any separation in the standings. There's still three back of the Saints and just one up on the Storm and the Pontiacs. Seven teams are within 10 points in that North Division. The Lakeland Rustlers women's basketball team got back on track last weekend, sweeping the two games against Grand Prairie, and now the girls get ready for another tough test. Matt Schumont has more. It was a bounce back the Rustlers needed after losing a pair of games to the ACAC's best team. They followed that up with a couple victories against the Wolves. A huge wins for us, especially after playing a tough team the week before. Um, the way our schedule is, there's certain games that we needed to get, and, and those are two for us. Uh, I wasn't really happy the way we started both games, but uh, the girls got progressively better, so that's important. Slow starts have hurt the team in the second semester, and know that will have to change quick if they want to make a deep playoff run. I don't know if our, it's our game prep coming in or that we just don't have a sense of urgency off the start. So uh, it's something we're trying to address this week. We're switching up what we do in practice a little bit right off the bat, putting them in game situations. But for us to beat those strong teams, we need to come out right away. So it, it is a, a worried point from the coaching staff. I think we need to come out with the mental focus. Um, I think we just, I don't think it's all there. So we just need to just step it up and kind of just be ready to play and know um, what our purpose is when we start the game out. This week in the girls face Kings College who sit in second place in the ACAC. Playing a much bigger team, Kings says they are going to find different ways to be successful. Hopefully uh, we can use our speed, we can shoot the ball well and we really got to make sure we take care of the ball uh, like we did at the end of last week. If we get these two wins it'll kind of help us make it a little bit easier for us to get into playoffs so, so we don't have to play that play in game. So. Matt Schumont, New Cap Sport. The Lakeland Rustlers curling teams are gearing up for winter regionals this weekend. All three squads are in contention to make provincials, but the surprise has been the mixed curling team turning heads at the fall regional, a trend they hope will continue in Edmonton. A team made up of three first years uh, to come in and, and go 5-0 and oh was certainly a, a pleasant surprise. The Rustlers mixed curling team went into the year expecting to be competitive. After the fall regional in Grand Prairie, the Rustlers sit atop of the standings through five draws. I knew that like, when we got there, we were ready to play. We showed up and we started. We made shots through the, all of the three days. Uh, last day was our roughest game, but still not too close to the game. So I guess we got to just build on that. It was pretty exciting. It was definitely a good way to start off this season and just got to keep it going for the next round because we're definitely going to have a target on our back because we're the only team that went 5 at all. A big credit to their success is familiarity. Skip Justin Anderson and third Carly Makajuk have played together before. We definitely know each other. We've been around. We've curled together since we started curling here in Lloyd back like 13 years ago now. So 
we've known each other for a long time. We just got to know each other really well and we just meshed and we all really worked hard as a team and really we had the same goal so we're all trying to get there and help each other to achieve that goal. They've uh, had success together in high school so uh, that was definitely when we were building the teams and uh, and looking at that that was the one, the one thing I considered. Despite being undefeated the wrestlers don't act like it constantly practicing to make sure they're ready for any outcome. Because other teams are going to be coming back pretty hard at us so we just got to make sure that everything is even tighter than it was before because now they know what they're up against right and we know we know that they could have easily I don't know obviously practice and improve since then as well. I'm thinking of it as we're 0 and 0 again it doesn't matter first regionals in the past kind of like we won that weekend kind of thing now we have to win this weekend. They need to take care of some business to the next regional and, and play every game uh, one game at a time and definitely don't take anything for granted. Uh, but if they take care of business and uh, stick to their fundamentals for sure, I, I don't see any reason why uh, they can't have a lot of success this year. All right, to day two of the Sastel Tanker, the morning draw saw Josh Height move into the A event semifinal while Josh's dad, Brad Height, played in the afternoon B event draw. Height would go on to defeat Randy Witowicz. 9-3, to three, as you see there. As for Daryl McKee, he's on his last legs at the Tankard, dropping to the C event after a 6-2 loss to Max Kirkpatrick. Elsewhere, Brock Virtue had a nice bounce back afternoon. After being down 2-0, he picked up 2 in the 6th, a steal of 2 in the 7th, and 3 in the 9th to defeat Michael Carr 7-3, and Justin Mihailik defeats William Coots 7-4. The Lakeland Wrestlers women's curling team are preparing for the Winter Regionals in Edmonton. Hoping to guide her team to a title is Skip Ocean Smart, who's this week's superstar next door. Ocean Smart has been curling since the age of five on the ice every day as her parents were managing a curling rink. When you have your doubts, mom and dad are always there to pick you right back up. I had two older brothers, they're both really into it too, so it was a family thing and it really helped. With many talented female curlers, Ocean tries to curl like her idol and Olympic silver medalist Cheryl Bernard. She's aggressive. She plays, um, like she knows when to throw the hitting game and I just like, I like that. I like her style of game, so that is why I like her. Skipping the women's team to a third place finish at last year's ACAC Conference Championships, she was also named the wrestler's MVP. She uh, does a, a good job uh, taking care of the basics uh, on the, just your delivery and uh, and uh, definitely the strategy of the game. She's uh, been coming along good on strategy and uh, just a, a definitely a joy to have on our team. Striving to be her best every time she's on the pebbled ice, there is one goal Ocean has been after since day one. I want the Scotty's ring. That's one of my, always, since I was little, I've always wanted one. So I'm going to try for it. Matt Schumont, New Cap Sports.